Well, country music has, has continued to grow in popularity everywhere, and I don't think people are that different. I feel like in, in Canada, wherever you go, it's growing. Well, you know, I guess the genre itself, it's never been the cool genre. Well, I think I think the rise of country music has uh, sped up in the last 10 to 15 years. I think that you know we've always had a strong I think we've always had a strong country fan base. And we've always had a strong country presence, but uh, I think with the um, with the onslaught of CMT, which started out as New Country Network, by the way, so it wasn't even CMT at the beginning, but NCN, New Country Network, gave um, gave fans more of a national uh, view of what country music was, was all about in Canada. I think that a lot of younger people started listening to country, whereas it used to be your grandparents' music, it's not anymore. Welcome to Dirty Dog Saloon in the heart of downtown Hamilton. I'm Kat Cullen from KX 94.7, and in just a few hours' time, this famous saloon is going to be packed with music lovers partying to their favorite country music songs. That's right, I said country. And over the next 15 minutes, we're gonna take you on a journey to show you that Canada is just as country as our Southern brothers. And along the way, we're gonna chat with some of the biggest names in country music, including Terry Clark, CMT's Paul McGuire, Jason McCoy, and KX94.7's very own Toppa Melissa. It all started in the late 50s when Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley got their breaks in Memphis, Tennessee. These two men took rock and hillbilly to create rockabilly, which eventually became country music. I think Johnny Cash brought to the table the, the fact that um, I think you just say it like it is. I don't think he, uh, I don't think he brought anything to the table that wasn't him on or off stage. And uh, he didn't try to fit into some mold that he wasn't. I think that's something that a lot of artists, including myself, spend years trying to find, is what your own voice is. So he started off with Sun and he started, you know, in that rockabilly thing, but he still, in his younger stuff, still sounded like Johnny Cash. It's almost like the world conformed to him. I have huge respect for Johnny Cash. Like, uh, I remember when I first read the book, uh, his biography, Man in Black, I was just blown away by this guy who he really lived what he was singing and to, like to me Johnny is one of the he's an icon not only in country music but just in music in general he's he was amazing and he still is, uh, his music is still it's going to be celebrated for many years in the late 60s country music was on a decline thanks to the rising popularity of the rock genre country record sales were moderate it wasn't until the 90s when Garth Brooks put country music back on the map. Well, I remember the Garth era very well. I was living in Nashville at the time, and um, I think Garth, um, I think he was one of the first ones to kick up the live show beyond what country music had been. I think that was the first, well, first of all, the, the songs were fantastic. He had a fantastic way of walking the pop and traditional country line that made it uh, palatable to people who weren't country fans and, and kind of a what's old is new again freshness for uh, traditional country fans. He made country cool. At the time he made it more mainstream. He, he brought about a show element to it that, that wasn't there before, at least not to that level. And uh, that, that's, that's I think Garth's biggest contribution was he he took country and made it a rock show. Garth and a few others made the cowboy hat cool to wear once again. Garth Brooks is the highest selling solo artist of all time. In 1997, he played a free concert in Central Park with an estimated 800,000 people in attendance. Americans were definitely catching on to the country music genre, and Garth Brooks was dominating the states with his high energy performances. Canada was even producing its own country talent, which had been a struggle in the past. Shania Twain had crossover success. She obviously has one of the biggest selling albums by a female ever and the biggest selling country album of all time. She changed the game for Canada, for music, for country music. She definitely was a game changer. Um, so she probably interested a lot more people in country music and they 
they decided to check out some other artists that may be open for Shania on tour, or you know, if they were listening to the radio to hear a Shania Twain song and they heard another song, they might they might become more interested in that. Garth Brooks had an influence on an Alberta citizen by the name of Paul Brand. Um, I think that Paul, you know, going to the states and and, and he had a couple big records down there was the first. Well, not the first male artist to, to impact in the States that was Canadian, but he, he was, you know, of that new crop. It was great, you know, because then everybody was on this, you know, train, and Shania Twain was doing well at the time, too, so it was like this Canadian invasion was happening all at once. I think Paul is, is just a great ambassador for country music in Canada. He's really great at, at connecting with an audience. You know, he's, uh, he's one of our biggest stars in, in country music or in music, music in Canada. He's one of our biggest stars. So um, to have a guy like him representing us, you know, and it's been great. Paul's, Paul's a, is very good for, for Canadian country music. Paul Brandt had some help kickstarting country music in Canada with another singer from Alberta. Her name, Terry Clark. Canada hadn't quite yet, quite yet sort of invaded the U.S. scene yet, and I was taking a pretty big leap of faith going to Nashville from Canada without trying to really break into the Canadian scene too much. I didn't get a record deal here first. I, I went right to Nashville, and, and I thought, you know, if I, could, if I could make it there, that it would bleed over into Canada eventually. Um, but, you know, that's, that, that's changed a lot since I started out. There have been a lot more Canadians do well, you know, stateside. Since Terry Clark and Paul Brandt, Canada has developed hot new talent such as Johnny Reed, George Canyon, Jim Cuddy, Dean Brody, Shania Twain, and Jason McCoy. What's next for Canada? The talent, the Canadian country talent is phenomenal. Uh, country artists are really making a name for themselves all over the world. So uh, you've got the likes of Paul Brandt and Terry Clark who were real pioneers, but then you've got uh, boy bands, as I like to call them, Emerson Drive, Doc Walker, you can't beat them. I think the country music is popular among young people uh, because it's, um, I think it's evolving. I think it's, I think it's, it's got those, those roots in traditional and swamp and southern rock and stuff, but it's got this infusion now of, uh, of cool and hip and it's just, there's, it's just evolving. Part of the deal of coming back into country music was that I had to work with indie artists. So they said, okay, we have a show we're thinking of doing. You will be in contact with all these indie artists across Canada, and you can help them out, try to steer them the right way. So I became a part of Factor to help them. I write letters for artists, trying to get them their grants. I also have a show that I do every week and highlight people, and I interview artists, and I just try to spread the word because there are so many great artists out there, great musicians, and that's part of why I like doing what I'm doing as an Emerging Artist Coordinator. Sing wherever and, and whenever you can because you, um, you just have to create, you just have to get out there and do your thing. When I was starting out it was playing in clubs and legions and places like that, that's, that's all you could do. As far as an artist goes, learn how to, to please an audience, get personal with the people, you know, go and play the, the Stampede Ranch and the Stampede Corral and be able to connect with the uh, that audience that you're uh, that you're you're trying to uh, you know, work work for and uh, and just keep honing your craft. I think now with with uh, internet and digital age, I think that now we've we've got a borderless uh, entity, and I don't think that that um, Canadian country artists are any different than American ones. And uh, we have a stronger fan base now in, in Canada of, of both Canadian and American artists because it doesn't stop at the at the border. Our music, people say, oh, it's Canadian, big deal, it's not American. Well, I think we have phenomenal acts here in Canada, and I think this is a way to highlight us. And I think this is the first time in a long time that we can actually compete. I think having American artists like in Canada is a good thing. I, I'm, the competition's always good. I think it's great for anything, whether it's sports or music or, or film. It's, it's good. It's good to have creative people mingling and crossing borders and it's great having Canadians in, in the U.S., in America. I mean, it's, I think it's great, it strengthens, it can't help but strengthen um, music. Canada has certainly been good to country music and ticket sales are up across the board with many shows being sold out. And the 2011-2012 Canadian Country Music Awards saw almost a million viewers tune in. 
No matter where you go in Canada over the summertime, you're bound to run into an outdoor country music festival. Almost every province has a big country music festival. From Prince Edward Island to British Columbia, Canada has you covered for the top country music acts. Oh, I think Canadian country jamborees are fantastic. Everybody wants to party. I mean, it's, it's, it's a license to go and drink beer for three days and hear live music and have a great time. And The country music jamborees that go on across Canada, they're, uh, they're awesome. You know, they draw a huge crowd. Uh, it's a, you know, probably a pretty good money maker for everybody involved. You know, the artists, they get lots of people out there to support them for the whole weekend and merch sales are through the roof. It's, it's an awesome boost to uh, Canadian country music. It's an awesome boost to the profile of, of talent that we have in Canada. And it started out in Canada, it was a little more of the folky kind of stuff, you know. But uh, now we have dedicated traditional country fans going to these festivals and they've just, uh, they've just exploded. You get used to it, it's a big party, it's just people wanting to have a, a good time and listen to music and hang out with their friends. Country music has become so popular because it's got something for everyone. Whether you like Alan Jackson with his cowboy hat on, playing something a little more traditional, or newcomer Eric Church with his baseball cap rocking out on the stage, country music will fit into your liking. When I was growing up and I heard country music, I really didn't like it whatsoever. I thought everything sounded the same. I started listening to country music just to impress somebody and when I was trying to do that I also started listening to K90X a lot and listening to that and always hearing Jason Aldean songs which are great or Luke Bryan songs which are great I started to really really enjoy it and now that I'm older I guess I can relate to the songs more and I can appreciate it more. Coming up through the ranks of country music is incredible and it's being showcased and uh, the younger generation is really grabbing onto it. It's really something to see. Canadian country music over the next five years, I think it has a lot of, uh, a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of markets out there, a lot of opportunities um, for Canadian artists to, to expand their, uh, their audience. Country music is uh, historically, like any music, it's kind of cyclical but it never goes away. When I, I've been in television for about 20 years and uh, a lot of my best friends are musicians um, I knew my, John, so I'm a music fan first and foremost. I knew Johnny and I knew Willie. Those were the two country guys that I knew that I had in my collection at home. Um, I had no idea about the Roadhammers. I had no idea about Paul Brandt. Um, so when I started at CMT about seven and a half years ago now, uh, it was a, an awakening of sorts for me. Um, I have become a good friends with a lot of the musicians. I've gotten to know music that I never would have been exposed to had I not lifted up that rock and discovered that incredibly vibrant world under there. I can, I can honestly say that Dirty Dogs does a really good job of presenting country music in a really cool way. They, they host events and they get people who don't like country involved. Even a rap person, a person who listens to hip hop, would probably enjoy being in that setting just because they do a very good job of presenting country in a whole different way. I always tell people what country music chose me, I didn't really choose it. I gravitated towards country when all my friends in you know, grade 7 and 8 were listening to other things. I loved country and it's just something that continued. I kind of like a bit of everything. I mean, like I said, growing up I listened to not just country, but that was the staple. But I listened to rock and roll and, and I listened to blues and I listened to soul and R&B. And so I like, uh, I tend to gravitate toward, um, I always go back to the Merle Haggards of the world, but I, I love the Gordon Lightfoot uh, traditional folk style and the early Ian Tyson stuff, Great Speckled Bird, all that. Uh, I'd have to say though that I really get turned on by where all those things meet together and that would be like the Jerry Reeds, Roger Miller, all those artists who entertain but also had uh, an influence of everything from jazz, R&B to traditional country. In the beginning, country music was an American genre, but it's come a long way since Johnny Cash. It's a growing genre that continues to cross all borders, and the future's looking bright for country music here in Canada. I want to thank Dirty Dog Saloon for having us out today. I'm Kat from KX94.7. Take care.